Well, hello and welcome to our brand new Marriott Kitchen Lab here in the Close Hip Building. Um, we want to take a few moments and go through all of the equipment that we have in the kitchen. We want to talk about how to properly use that equipment. We want to talk about the safety behind that equipment. So anytime you walk into the kitchen, you will always uh, feel confident in using this equipment. Know that you can use it correctly and that you can use it safely. One of the first things that you will notice is that we have seven stoves here. Okay, they are all gas. They are all uh, uh, gas, and they are all lit, ready to go. The pilot lights run down the center here, so there's a burner in the front, a burner in the back, and the pilot lights are right in the center for each one of them. The grates on top are cast iron because these pilot lights are always going to be lit. These cast iron grates are always going to be hot. So we want to be careful not to put anything on top of here that we don't want to cook. Okay, if we put a pan on top of here, something like that's going to get hot. There's a product there. It's going to burn if we're not watching it. We have to be careful. We don't want to touch it or else we might get burned. So we have to be very careful. Nothing goes on the stove unless we want to cook with it. You'll see a whole host of knobs at the front. These knobs, uh, the two that are connected here, they, they turn on our burners, and it's, it's very simply. You turn it to the left, and you'll get a flame to come on. You turn it back to the right, and it'll lower and eventually turn that flame off, which is perfect uh, for adjusting our, our temperature. So the one on the left will control your front. The one on the uh, right will control the back burner, which is very helpful to know. Um, if you turn on a burner and you don't get a flame, turn the burner back off. We'll be able to uh, come and check. The pilot light might have gone out for some reason and we need to relight it. What we don't want to do is if we turn the burner on and a flame doesn't appear here, we, we don't want to just leave the burner on because then if the gas is on, it's going to cause gas to leak out in the building and eventually it's going to hit a flame and it could cause a fireball. So we want to be very careful about that. So if you turn it on, there's no flame coming out, turn it right back off and make sure that uh, make sure that there's no gas leaking. Let us know as the instructors that we can help you to check the pilot lights and things like that and get them relit if we need to. Up under, you will notice that we have ovens on all of these stoves. These are very helpful. The, they are convection ovens. Um, and they're very simple to use. They're not very difficult at all. You will see a button on the right side of the oven. This button here at the top says cook, at the bottom says, or in the middle says off, and at the bottom says cool down. So when you come in and you're ready to use your oven, you're going to want to turn it to cook. So just push the button up. You'll hear the oven come on. You'll hear, hear the fan in the back start to turn. And then you see a lower knob right here. It's kind of offset from the rest of the knobs. This is your control for the oven. You want to make sure that you set it to the temperature that you want. Give your oven about 10 or 15 minutes, and it'll be ready to go. All you have to do is open it up, and you can slide your products in. You want to be very careful. All of this is metal, so as it heats up, Everything's going to be hot, so you don't want to touch anything by accident. You want to be very careful when you're using those ovens, okay? So these are our ovens and our stoves. Uh, like I said, we have seven of these. This is what probably the most used piece of equipment that we have in the entire kitchen. Right next to our stoves, you're going to see this. This is our deep fryer. We actually have two back to back on the other side of each other. So we, so we have two deep fryers right here. These are very helpful to use. You're going to uh, use these a great deal in class. These are our fryer baskets. Many times you will see this kind of lid on it so we can take the lid off and you'll see our oil. These things are very very simple to operate. It doesn't uh, take a lot to, to be able to use them. Pilot light will generally always be on. 
All we have to do is turn this dial here, and you'll hear the fryer fire up. You'll hear it come on. It's going to, um, if you look down over the top, you'll see tubes that run through the oil. Fire will go through those tubes. These are gases where, well, fire will go through those tubes, and it will heat up the oil that's inside the fryer. One of the biggest safety things you want to be sure about is not to put anything or your hand right back in this area. This is the exhaust for the fryer, so you want to be very careful not to put anything back here uh, because it's going to get really, really hot. Our fryer baskets will hang just like this. And of course, all you have to do is careful, carefully lower them down into the oil and they will uh, start to cook the products, and then you can raise those back up once you're done and let your product drain, and then you'll be ready to put it into your bowl or your hotel pan, whatever it might be, uh, that you're going to keep it warm in. So this is our fryer. Not very difficult to use. Um, you set the dial, give it a few minutes, and, uh, and it'll get hot, and you'll be set ready to go. Just want to be careful. The oil's going to be hot. Everything on this tank is going to be hot. So anything that you touch on purpose or, or being careless, um, you're going to get burned. So you want to be very careful about that. And, of course, the back area where the exhaust is. Here we have uh, probably one of the most useful pieces of equipment that we have in our kitchen. These are steam kettles. Five gallon steam kettles. Uh, these pieces of equipment are designed for us to cook stocks in. We can make clarified butter in, soups in. We can cook noodles and rice and, and all different types of things in these kettles. They're super efficient uh, and, and they're really, really safe. We really like these pieces of equipment because you've got an inside pot and you have an outside jacket. And between the two, it's been vacuum sealed. And there's water inside of there where it's been vacuum sealed, and there's a burner under there. What happens is when we turn it on, that burner will heat up, heat up the water that's vacuum sealed in between this outside jacket and this inside pot, and it turns into steam, kind of a pressurized steam, okay? And it's going to heat up this entire thing. And, and what's so wonderful about this is that it helps because of how it cooks, it's a very even cook, um, or because of how the steam heats up, it's very even cook and even heat distribution throughout. So we don't have as much scorching and things like that. Because it's all of an enclosed unit, we feel very safe um, leaving this on for a long time uh, just by itself and, and, and letting, it, uh, letting it cook. If we had a, uh, a bunch of stock that we needed to make, uh, we wouldn't necessarily want to leave it on a burner on the stove overnight. That's not very safe, open flames and things like that. Um, this piece of equipment, we could easily put stock in, leave it overnight. It would be very to do that. We've done it many, many times um, as long as we're on the right temperature and things like that. So um, these, are, these are super efficient and really, really safe for us to use. So to operate it, you've got um, a water... Uh, faucet at the back, you can easily fill it up with water right here. You don't have to bring water over to it, which is very, very nice. To turn it on, you see a knob and it even has an arrow that tells you which one it goes to. You give it a turn, and then you'll see in just a couple of minutes it'll click over to a, uh, a green light. And when the green light comes on, you know that it's going to be heating, okay? Once you're done with your product, and you can hear it sometimes before it's already starting to heat up that water, um, once you're done with the product, you can pull this drawer out, just like this. This drawer has a break down in the bottom of it. It also has a drain. It's connected to our floor drain. There's a latch. We're going to stand beside the pot. We're not going to stand in front of it. We're going to stand beside the pot. And we're simply going to tilt and pour our products out. If we need to, um, if we 
obviously want to catch the products, we're going to put something here to uh, to catch the product. So if it's stock, we may put a cambro down here to catch all the stock into. Um, if it's noodles, maybe we put a colander in here so that the water can run through and go out. Okay. So this piece of equipment is very easy to use, and, and uh, like I said, it's very safe for us to use, especially on long cooks. Um, we want to be careful if we're tilting this that we don't stand in front of it. If we stand in front of it, it can have a tendency to splash out on us and we don't want to do that. So we always want to make sure we stand to the side. We want to make sure that we pour it very gently. We don't want to turn it over real quick or else it's going to go out toward our classmates and people in the room. So we don't want to do anything like that. We want to make sure that the area is clear when we start to do this. And then when we get done, we lock it back. Okay. If for some reason you come and you try to turn the unit on and it doesn't come on, it has a safety feature on it that if it's not locked, it's not heating. Um, so you may want to just check and make sure, yeah, it's locked in place, and then it should come back on for you if for some reason it does not. So these are our uh, speed kettles. Like I said, we have two of them. We use them a lot in uh, in our production every single day, so it's something that, uh, that you'll use probably a good bit of uh, when when you're in here. So utilize these pieces of equipment. They are, they are very helpful. They are very efficient, and uh, we really... Uh, really get a lot of use out of these every single day. Our next piece of equipment here is our Rationale Self-Cooking Center Combi Oven. This is uh, probably one of the coolest pieces of, pieces of equipment that we have here in our kitchen, and it's something that we really, really are grateful for. Um, this is not just a normal oven. We've got normal ovens up under our stoves. This is a uh, really a computer within itself um, that will roast, that will bake, that will steam, that will do a combination of those different things. Um, this machine is very versatile. We can set it up um, with our own recipes inside it and actually just touch it and tell it, you know, this is what I want you to do. This is what we're cooking. It knows it. It knows the temperature. It knows how dark we want the product to have. You can hear it when it comes on. Um, it, it knows how dark we want the product to be. It knows how long the product needs to cook, all these different things. Um, so we really, really, really like this piece of equipment. It's very simple to use. Um, if, uh, if you just want to do some basic, uh, some basic things with it. So, so let's look at this panel for a minute and let's see exactly what our options are here with this panel. Okay, so here is the panel that will come up, our display panel. Um, at the top here, these top three buttons, these are going to be your manual modes. So steam, convection, or a combination of steam and convection heat. Once you click on these, it's going to give you just a few options. So we're going to click on this one first. This is our convection heat mode. You'll see that it has a moisture or humidity setting. Right now it's at 100%. In this convection mode, 100% means that we're keeping 100% of the uh, moisture within the product in, inside the cabinet. Now we can adjust this if we need to, to release some of that, um, which we would probably want to do. We don't want it to have too much moisture in there, else our product's not going to roast correctly. We can easily set our temperature here, or also dial it in down here. Then we have the option of setting a timer, or using the probe thermometer. If we use the probe thermometer that's inside the unit, we simply set the temperature to what we want the probe thermometer to be. Um, so if we were cooking a piece of chicken and we wanted to just cook it to 165, then we're good to go. If we want to use time, then we've got minutes and seconds. Um, and again, we can adjust this if we need to. Or we can hit the clock with the uh, circle arrow around it, and that's simply going to tell us that it's going to continually cook. If we back out of this, those options are going to be the same on the uh, steam and on the uh, combination cooking. You'll also see all these different icons down here. So poultry and beef, uh, seafood, you've got egg dishes, you've got side dishes, you've got breads, um, and you've got plated dishes.
So if we click on one of these, it's going to bring up a whole host of things that you can do or, or ways that we can cook. So we can pan fry or we can grill. We can do breaded products. We're going to braise meats and pastries, whatever it might be. So if we hit pan fry, we're going to see this screen come up. How thick or thin is the product that we're going to pan fry? So if it's real thin, then we'll leave it on thin or we can adjust it to thick. What coloration do we want in our product? How dark or how light are we going to want? Are we using a probe thermometer? And if we are, what temperature do we want that at? Okay. Once it heats up, you can tell over here that it is heating up. Once it heats up, our timer is going to start. It's an automatic minute and second timer because we're telling it to pan fry to a certain temperature. With this thickness, it's telling us how long that's actually going to take to happen inside this machine. We have all these options for all of these different types of, uh, of, of cooking items. We can also um, go in and set these, uh, these buttons here with our different racks, and we can tell um, the machine what is on each rack, and it will tell us, it'll let us basically multitask. Um, it'll tell us how long those products need to cook, for each one, we can set up these buttons for our own specific recipes, which is really, really nice. So we can slide them and tell them what rack they're going to go on, and the machine will let us know exactly when those products are done, each individual one. And while we've got the door open, it stops the cooking on the rest of the product. So that's very, very helpful to us. So this is something that we're going to utilize a lot in this class. One of the cool parts about this oven is that it does a multitude of things. So you saw on the screen we could pan fry things. Um, we can air fry using this. We can grill using this. And so one of the things that you'll notice um, in the HRTM270 lab so often is that we'll compare what is it like to fry a product in the oven here and what is it like to fry it in the deep fryer? What is it like to grill a product in here as um, as compared to putting it on the actual grill. Sous vide, we can sous vide in here. So we'll sous vide in our sous vide machine, we'll also sous vide in here. And, and compare and contrast these uh, different cooking methods because these units right here are so helpful in helping us to learn um, how to train our employees. Maybe you work at a hotel. A lot of major hotels are starting to get these because it takes, uh, it, it doesn't take a very skilled staff to be able to operate these, right? You, you don't have to have a culinary degree to be able to operate it. As long as you can show someone exactly how to push the buttons and what buttons to push, the machine will do all the cooking for you, which is super helpful. Um, to use the machine after you set everything on the display, you just open the door, you slide your product in, and you close it back, and it's set ready to go. So it's very simple and easy to use. Once you uh, once you kind of understand the displays that are here, we're going to be going over all that. We're going to be showing you all of that as we go throughout the class. So this is a Rationale Self-Cooking Center Combi Oven. So here we have our char grill or, or our gas grill, whatever you would like to call it. This is uh, the grill that we use for grill, grilling products here in our class. It's, uh, it's super efficient. Um, it works really, really well. It is gas. It is six burners, so it's uh, very even cooking throughout uh, the entire surface here, which we really, really like. Um, to use it is, is very simple. You, you literally turn the, uh, turn the knob, and the flame will come on. There's a heat shield under here, or over here, and the burner's up under the heat shield, and so it'll heat the heat shield up across the uh, uh, across um, the the entire grill here. So turn all your different uh, different burners on. You can put them at different temperatures, so maybe going from highest temperature to lowest temperature, so you can work from one end to the other. We also have the option with this grill. If you notice this handle here, we push it down. We pull it over to the left, and it raises the back end of the grill up. So we can move products 
further away from the heat, and down here they'll be closer to the heat. Okay, or if we want to cook all at the same level, we just put it back to the right. One thing that will always happen is there's always a little bit of a slant to the grill, um, and that's just so that any grease can run down the grate and run out uh, into our trap right here. We want to be very careful. Obviously, a grill, it's going to get hot. All of the protective panels around here are going to get hot. All of this front area here is going to get hot. So we want to be real careful when we have this on that we don't bump up against this. One good thing about having long sleeve chef jackets is that if you do hit it, a lot of times it'll hit your, uh, your jacket and it won't hit your bare skin. Um, so we want to make sure that we're real careful anytime that we're using this product, uh, this piece of equipment, we're around this piece of equipment and it's on. We want to make sure that, uh, that, that we're being very careful. Pilot lights, just like on our stove, the pilot lights are always going to be on this piece of equipment, so we want to make sure that we don't put anything on here that we don't want to cook. This isn't used for storm pans or, or anything like that, so we want to be very careful with that. So this is our Garland six burner char grill. Alright, so you will see we have two large uh, stand mixers that are here in the class. We also have um, smaller KitchenAid mixers uh, that are up under each one of our workstations. These we use anytime we're doing a lot of uh, bulk uh, mixing or maybe we're making a lot of pizza dough or bread dough or something like that. Uh, we, we would use uh, these machines. All the way. Very simple to use. So you have um, controls here on the front. You can set your minutes. Um, you can set your seconds and in increments of five to your minutes uh, by one minute or more. And uh, you hit the button, the start button, it'll start going. You hit the stop button and it will stop. A few things you want to pay attention to. This knob that's right here, this is your speed control. You Right now we've, we're in speed one. If we want to change to speed two or speed three, we're going to stop the machine. Let the uh, let let the machine completely stop, and then we're going to change to a different speed, and then we're going to start the machine back. We don't want to change gears, change speeds while it's uh, while it's in operation. It can mess up the motor inside of there. Okay, back here, this will this lever will raise and lower your bolt. So it's very simple: raise and lower your bolt. You will slide. Your, uh, your cage back here, you can uh, put your products in. Maybe you need to put an attachment on. So we have three different attachments. We, we have the paddle attachment. We have a whip attachment. And we have our dough hook. All of your attachments, you will notice, have a slot. And you'll notice that, uh, that the mixer on this pin has a has a pin that comes out. So this slot and that pin have to line up. And when you do that, it'll slide all the way up. And then you can twist it. And now it's locked on. Okay. This mixer has a lot of safety features in it. So the cage has to be closed. The bowl has to be raised and in its locked position in order for it to work. Okay. Once those things happen, it'll come on. Just like that. Once we're done, we can lower the bowl. We can open the cage. We can take off our attachment. And the bowl itself will come off. You'll notice there are uh, levers that go over the bowl that helps keep the bowl in case it starts rocking. It'll help to keep it in place and the bowl will lift up and come off. To go back on, you'll notice there's a peg in the back of the bowl. You'll notice there's a hole here. Those have to be lined up. And then it'll go right back on. We lock it down like so and we're ready to use it. So these are 
our uh, our stand mixers that we have in here. And like I said, we have two of them with all three attachments for each one. Well, welcome to everybody's favorite room. This is the dish bin. Right, and uh, anytime you're using the kitchen, obviously you're going to have to be able to wash the dishes that you use. Okay, so um, we want to make sure you know how to use these pieces of equipment. Make sure that you know how to set them up correctly and uh, and are using them properly. They're very simple to use. As long as we use the right equipment for the right task, everything will go just fine. Same thing in the kitchen as in the dish pit. Okay, one of the first things you'll see is our dish machine here. Um, this is a high energy, high efficient, um, high temperature dish machine. Okay, so when you come up to the dish machine, if you have your dirty dishes, let's say uh, we had used this uh, this Lexan here, this Cambro, um, we would put it on our on our dish rack. If it had stuff in it, we would make sure our hot water is turned on, and we would spray it out right in here, okay? Um, this is designed to catch any of the food products while letting the liquid pass through. We then turn our product, our uh, piece of equipment, whatever it might be, upside down. And then we're gonna slide it into the dish pit, into the dish machine, and all we have to do is close the lid and it starts. It's gonna take this machine 90 cents to run. It's going to wash, it's going to rinse, it's going to sanitize all in 90 seconds, which is very efficient. Anytime we're in a restaurant, we can have a turnover like that. Um, so we want to make sure that products are coming in and coming out very quickly. This machine uses hot water to sanitize. Some machines use chemicals to sanitize. Our three compartment sink that we'll talk about soon um, uses, uh, uses chemicals. This machine uses hot water, at least 180 degree hot water. So you have to make sure once it's done with its uh, with this 90 second wash, rinse, and sanitize cycle, we open the door, we slide the product out. If we go and touch that right now, it's going to be very, very hot. So we want to be very careful about that. If it happened to be, um, let's say, a metal sheet pan or something like that, a pair of tongs, something like that, um, they're going to be very hot because obviously they're going to hold that heat a lot longer. So we want to be very careful with that. So this is the dish machine. If you come in and you're the one setting up and it's not on, it's very simple to use. There's a red button here. You hit that. You close the machine. It's automatically going to start filling itself up. It's automatically going to get itself hot okay, with all the water in, inside of it being the, to the temperature that it needs to be. At the end of the day, you just do the complete opposite. You just turn it off. It's automatically going to drain itself. Inside the machine on the hand side, you'll see some little grates. We just pull the grates out, clean them off, and we can put them back. If there's any products inside there, make sure that we clean those off as well. So um, our dish machine is really not designed to wash everything. Dish machines just don't do that. Um, they're more designed to wash uh, plates. Um, they're more designed to wash utensils, um, things like Cambros and Lexans and, and uh, product or, or pieces of equipment that don't really have uh, burnt on products to them, okay? That's not really what a dish machine is designed to do. If you put that, you know, you, you've uh, cooked a lot in a saute pan, you put the saute pan in here, it's not going to clean it. Really what it's going to do is bake on that carbon and that uh, dirt to the product, to the pan a lot more than, uh, than actually cleaning it, okay? Um, so for products like that or, or pieces of equipment like that, you're actually going to take those over to uh, the three quarter sink and you're going to scrub those and wash those in there. This is going to be basically for everything else. So this is our dish uh, dish machine. We'll take a look at our three compartment sink and talk a little bit about how it operates. Okay, so this is the three compartment sink that we have here in the kitchen. Um, you start on the left hand side and you work your way across to the right hand side. You'll see that we've already got chemicals set up. You'll see that we have controls on how to put those chemicals into the sinks right over the top, okay? So if we start on the left hand side, the first thing 
that you want to do right here is that you want to scrape off anything that might be on the pot, on the pan, um, into the trash can. Okay, so scrape as much as you can off. Then you're going to come to this sink. This is our wash sink. This is going to be soapy water, and we've got our scrub pads. We use scrub pad to clean everything with to fill this sink up. Make sure our knob is turned uh, here um, on the faucet. Make sure it's turned crossways. So if we turn it straight up and down, see it turns the water up here. If we turn it this way, it diverts the water up here. The left knob is our soap. This piece of equipment will go ahead and mix at the right ratio our soap to water. Um, we push our drain in up under the bottom. And we let it start to fill up. And we're going to let it get about three quarters of the way full so that we can completely submerge products in there. Our middle sink, after you've washed it real good with the soapy water and scrub pad, our middle sink, we would fill it up with just clean water. And it's going to, um, we're going to take the product out of the soapy water, we're going to dunk it in here. This is what's going to rinse the product off. So we want to make sure that pot and pan gets rinsed really, really well. And then our last sink operates just like our very first sink. So our last sink is our sanitizer. Um, we push the drain in. We turn the knob. It mixes the sanitizer chemical along with the water at the right ratio. We're going to let it get, uh, get about three quarters of the way full. It has to be in the sanitizer for at least, um, at least a minute, so at least 60 seconds. Completely submerged in there. It can't be halfway sticking out. It's not doing any good to the part of the product or part of the pot or pan equipment that's sticking out of the sanitizer. Completely submerged in the sanitizer. 60 seconds. Once it's done there, we can move it to this drain board. Once it's on this drain board, we just let it air dry. We're not going to towel dry anything. We're not going to dry anything with paper with a, a paper towel or anything like that. So we let it air dry. And then we go back and, uh, and put it back at our table or wherever it goes. So we want to make sure we're following the right procedures in our uh, in our three compartment sink. Anytime uh, the water starts to get real dirty, real greasy, anything like that, we want to drain it. We want to clean the sink. We want to refill it. To drain, all you have to do is pull it out. Pull the drain out. You'll see every, every uh, all the water go out. You might want to get a little clean soap and make sure that you clean the inside of the sinks real well. If there was a lot of grease in here, when you go to fill it up with your water, you, your water is just going to be greasy again. So you want to make sure that uh, that you don't uh, you, you don't fill it up and have greasy water because then it's not really doing anything, okay? So make sure that you're keeping them clean. At the end of the day, same thing. We're going to drain everything. We're going to clean it all with soap. We're going to um, clean it with... Uh, with uh, rinse water, and then we're going to sanitize everything. So we'll get a little bit of uh, sanitizer in one of our buckets, and we'll kind of pour it over and make sure that we've sanitized everything as well. So this is our three compartment sink. This is where you're going to wash the majority of your dishes at. This is what you're going to want to utilize the most. We want to make sure that we keep all of our pots and our pans uh, clean and looking as new as we possibly can. And this is how we do that, by making sure that we wash and rinse them uh, and sanitize them properly every single day. You don't want to come in and have to wash and uh, sanitize a, a piece of equipment um, because it's going to hold you up. So make sure that you don't leave it like that for anyone else. Make sure that it's always nice and clean um, for you too, so for the next person. So this is the three-part sink. This is the dish pit.